what is linguistics? That is the question you're going to ask. Linguistics is, um, as written here, the systematic and scientific study of languages. Not English only, it can be any language. Linguistics is the study of human languages. It's not limited to English. Though, uh, now, because you are English major students, we are, we are looking primarily at English language. So linguistics tries to answer uh, questions like, what is language? How does language work, etc. And see here, there is a very interesting definition. Uh, the term language, which is used in varied and seemingly far-fetched context, uh, it, it has a meaning, a specialized sound signaling system, which seems to be genetically programmed to develop in humans. So language, as we use that word, is primarily human language. Only human beings have uh, uh, such a structured and complicated linguistic system. So that is language. And linguistics looks at, tries to attempt to define language, look at the features of language, and also sees how language works. Why, uh, why should we bother about that? Because we are, we are studying English language and literature, and there is a possibility of our becoming English teachers. And to teach English, a good knowledge of linguistics will be of great use to you. Also, to be good users of English, a good knowledge of linguistics will be of use to you. So linguistics is a science. We, we repeatedly say it's a science because in within the field of literature, literature falls within the domain of, uh, partly in the domain of arts and partly in the domain of uh, humanities in general, because today, uh, liter though we say English literature, uh, it, the domain has, the boundaries has, the boundaries have widened and we don't talk about literature only. We don't talk about English literature only. We don't talk about literature only. We talk about other things as well. We, we might talk about culture. We might talk about psychology, philosophy, history, sociology, anthropology, so many other uh, branches of study kind of mingle with the study of English language and literature. Therefore, uh, I would say that uh, because our domain is so vast, a knowledge of linguistics uh, would be of great help to us. And linguistics also tends to overlap a bit into other domains. So it's a science and other aspects of literature, like uh, as, as I said, generally arts and humanities do not fall under the division of science. So psychology sometimes kind of is considered to be, uh, to fall under humanities, but it is, it is very scientific. Uh, but philosophy, history, uh, political science, languages, etc., fall in the domain of uh, humanities, which is different from science. I'm not saying it is not logical, but that science is slightly different. Uh, so linguistics is a science which studies the origin, organization, nature, and development of language descriptively, historically, comparatively, and explicitly formulating the general rules related to language. Well, modern linguistics is uh, referred to as a science. So it is a science, when you say that linguistics is a science, then it would definitely have a, a set of features which make it scientific. What are they? Um, the, um, uh, you know, we are looking at the scientific aspects. We are trying to kind of define what a science is and what happens in a scientific study of something. So here it is a scientific approach to languages and uh, what are the features that make linguistics a science? So observation, a scientist observes a series of phenomena in everyday life, collects uh, data impartially, impartially is an important word, classifies them and then you come out with some general principles. That is what happens in science. You observe things, then you collect data and then come to certain assumptions based on that. So that is what happens in physics, in life sciences, etc. Uh, we do that all the time. 
And then based on the information they have uh, through a process of induction, uh, they come to general statements governing the phenomena observed. That is the next thing that happens. You observe facts, you put these facts together, you analyze them, you study them very closely, and you draw inferences. You come to certain general statements about uh, what happens. So that, that is where we come across two words. One is induction, inductive, and deduction and deductive. So inductive and deductive are two, two ways in which we perceive reality. Inductive and deductive are two different ways in which we perceive reality or we understand the world. Cognitive processes involved are in the brain. Cognitive processes are involved. Cognition means understanding, trying to understand external reality. External reality is very uh, deceptive and you need to apply your mind very cautiously and go about it using your sense of reason, analytical powers, logical reasoning, critical thinking, etc. and study it and come to conclusions. So your reasoning, the way your cognitive processes work, can be in two ways, inductive and deductive. So this is linguistics, it involves inductive reasoning. Linguistics is a scientific study, therefore we use a lot of basic information first and we, we, we divide the language into its components and then we come to conclusions. Um, another aspect that makes uh, linguistics scientific is experimentation. Uh, the scientist conducts experiments to test whether the observed fact fits the hypothesis formulated. You, you have a set of hypotheses and you, you work on that. So when you do research in linguistics or in uh, English language teaching, you will you'll, you'll use many scientific tools. Unlike when you uh, do a literature-based study in linguistics or applied linguistics, because English teaching uh, comes under applied linguistics, you will be using many scientific tools, analytical tools. And so finally, based on inductive and deductive reasoning, you come up with the formulation of a law. So that is very important, formulation of a law. Uh, so here you must have a clear idea of what we mean by law. So don't walk on this particular side of the road. That is the law. It is not that law we um, use here. Law is used with a, with a different sense. So um, based on, let's read this. When the scientist is dissatisfied with the hypothesis, accounts accurately for the for most of the data, he formulates his hypothesis as a law, not a law to be obeyed, but a law in the sense of a concise description of phenomena. So the the word law here means a concise description of phenomena. We use the word law in that sense also. For example, uh, in the video I, I mentioned a while ago. Uh, there is a video called Grimm's Law and Werner's Law. What is Grimm's Law? Grimm's Law explains a few sound changes that happened in many languages. And it, it, the, the impact can be seen in English also. That's why we learn the Grimm's Law. So it's law. It's law, not the law of the land. It is a, it is a setting down of a few very unchanging facts. That is what we mean by law here. So that is formulation of a law means formulation of a statement of uh, or a description of phenomena that has been uh, that we have come to after making a lot of inductive uh, fact based observations. So that is why all these um, uh, hold uh, when we talk about linguistics. Linguistics is a scientific study which involves all these things. OK, now we come to another aspect of linguistics. Linguists are interested in what is said and what they think ought to be said. So this is what we call um, science generally does that. Science describes, science observes, studies, and comes to certain assumptions and says this is how it is. Rather than saying this is how it should be. It is not codification of rules. It is setting down of observed facts. That is what research does, actually. 
you you might make recommendations but you will not say that this is how it should be so um linguistics modern linguistics particularly attempts to um describe a language in all its aspects rather than prescribe rules about correctness okay formally when we talk about traditional times uh, which we will come to after a while when th there was a time when linguistics or the study of languages was a lot rule based with where rules were fixed and people insisted that these rules should be kept but language is something that constantly changes and so modern days in in modern days linguistics looks at the use of language not whether they keep any particular rule and also they there is no higher variety and accepted varieties well we'll we'll explain that more later but again uh, in malayalam speech also we would we would consider um, uh, people who talk uh, talk an elegant kind of malayalam to be very respectful so we say that the malayalam that is heard in mid travancore is the standard and some people would say that the malayalam heard in um, uh, mid north is the standard like between say trishur and uh, kolikot is the best language but actually there are no such best things there is no standard every educated person would speak a kind of neutral uh, malayalam but the, the all the malayalam language varieties that are heard in all parts of kerala are equally important because of an illiterate fisherman speaking to his neighbor is very very important to him and his neighbor though it may may not be very it, it may sound a little odd to another set of people living in another part of the state but to the people using that language with all its singularity singularities is very important for that person so we accept that with all kind of respect so there is uh, we accept all varieties we do not insist that that uh, you, you know the other day i was uh, i was interacting with some students in uh, calicut region and i heard them talk uh, talk malayalam and uh, his teacher was asking cordially uh, is it raining and he said cherungane malayalam said so that that is cherungane means cherudait so that is his dialect to him that is very important you cannot laugh at him and say you shouldn't say cherungane it should be something else he would correct you if he hears a different version so as far as that individual is concerned his dialect is very sacrosanct to him so there is no high or low as far as language is concerned and again uh, modern linguistics looks at the spoken form as more being more important than the written form so the spoken aspect came first in in life also you start speaking first and you start writing much later in the history of language also the spoken aspect came much much before writing came human beings learned to write only say 3000 4000 years ago though he has been talking or using some kind of language for over maybe a couple of tens of thousands of years so the so linguists look first at the spoken word which is which is, which preceded the written in every way and then linguistics are also opposed to the notion that any one lang any one language can provide an adequate framework for all the others linguists would question the superiority or the standard claim of any particular language because uh, in 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 india for example even in kerala maybe some 100 years back malayalam was studied in the using the grammatical framework of sanskrit in europe maybe 150 or 200 years back english was attempted to be studied against a latin framework which is actually very absurd no language can be studied within the framework of another language because each language works on a totally different logic which is which is a very delightful area of study.